yes. Uh, just completed uh, drafts, first drafts of the 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 uh, Starship locations season three, and this is an announcement that I put on the Chimera channel that we have completed. We got it right here, season three. Uh, we have some fun names here and some fun stories. Uh, a little bit of which you can go into, I guess. Uh, the the uh, yeah, starting out this first season back in November, um, but with uh, some uh, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, we've been going over them uh, for a couple months and figure them out. Calcan and Mark's cards, of course, uh, and writers' room stuff. Uh, no, no drama in them really. Um. Yeah, coming out with different story ideas and premises. Uh, they leave a little backstory of, of, of that, but briefly, uh, the you know uh, the first one we decided on was called Legacy of the Oldies. We decided to return to the planet from Miri from uh, the US, and we decided to do all the some of the Cillian planets we encountered during the Phantom and Clerks. And Tom and Clark's story. So we were going to go back doing doing some of that. We were going to go to Flow Dive. We were going to go to Far Out. Uh, we we're going to show that for the first time. And Cillian Earth for the first time. In print. So the stories, the Cillian Realms books, are canon with themselves, but because it's a Star Trek parody, we, we have changed the names of the book, the Amazon books, so that it's to avoid copyright issues with Paramount and CBS and all that. They're changing the names a little um, to, to avoid that. But they're Star Trek spoofs. That's what they are. Um, so Starship the Strange Worlds came out around a little before Strange New Worlds did. About a year and a half before, I think. Uh, we, we started doing Strange Worlds uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, the, uh, and they based theirs on the same story writing thing from the 1990s. As they did ours, so so we did that, and um, uh, the title went the title "Strange New Worlds," "Strange Worlds." Uh, so so the first season was Starship location, "Strange Worlds," with "Strange Worlds," and um, and yeah, 2000, 2020, and 2021, and whatever. And when they started the Picard show, around 2019, 2020. They got the year wrong because they did uh, because the, where they put the years in place, and that that becomes a factor later. Uh, they they really should have said the Picard show took place in 2396 and moved everything back to when you know, the other stuff happened. Just so happened the pandemic happened at the same time, so that they were doing Picard season two, so they wanted to fix it, so they said 2401. They heard they they heard about the timeline was messed up. In Star Trek it was messed up, so they heard about that. Not from us, but from other people. I'm not going to take the credit for that. They tried to fix it with that one, and now they're going to try to fix it with Season 3. Uh, it comes up in the story. Anyway, so the uh, nutshell here is uh, the only legacy takes us to the Evergreen and State planet, also known as the Miri planet. We put them together, thought that that was let's just say that they, they, they went to that colony planet and they settled there and that's what they're doing. That's fine. Uh, Legacy of the Old Leads. Um, so the Miri Planet. Uh, we introduce... Uh, what's interesting about this story is there is a character in it called Peppermint. who is a uh, Peppermint Striped Tribble from David Gerald's table at the uh, Silicon Valley Comic Convention, Silicon... Uh, Adam Savage Silicon Convention last summer. And thought it would be funny to, to include that in there. He doesn't really do much this season. He's in this 90-minute awesome it's a movie it's filmed like a movie uh pilot story it's 90 minutes so it's like so you're gonna get a lot and, 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 uh, it may look like there's only eight or nine episodes but you get two movies in here you get legacy of the onlys and later on a tms one called code of ethics so legacy of the onlys uh, uh miri was done by a guy named adrian spies for tos and uh, go back to that planet but it's a silly and Silly Trek version. It's called Miriam there. After my grandmother's middle name. Wait, grandmother's middle name. <laughs> Miriam. Um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, once we figured everything out, where are we going from there? Mm. 
me see if I have everything in order here. It doesn't matter what order I filmed them in. Yeah, so there were there was there were three episodes kind of jammed together at the end of January. Um yeah, I mean, we wanted to Yeah, we wanted to do something with that. Um and we're like, yeah, we want to do, I think this one was, yeah, this was completed earlier. This was like December. There was like a month. I think about late, or mid-December. The pilot. Um, yeah, doing other episodes from there. We are going to do, a, we were going to do a holiday movie. There's there's also the Robotech meets the Transformers sequel, Sentinels Saga, from like Cowpoke. Uh, yeah, that one. Too. We're doing that first. We're not doing this next. Uh, Star Star Trek Picard Season 3 is next over there at Star Trek. And we're not doing this next. We're doing the Robotech thing next. Um, and then we're going back to it. So it'll probably be during Discovery Season 5 or, <laughs> or Lower Deck Season 3. Something like that. Um, so, or 4. So, later on. <laughs> or Strange New Worlds. But it's later on. But but it is, it is down the pike. This is what's next. After Robotech. Uh, the next uh, couple of stories we did is we kept talking about the contest stories that we created under our real names, Adam Brown and John Yeager, <laughs> back in the 1990s, in the mid-1990s, for the Star Trek writing contest, and we've gone over them before. They were Fearful Symmetry and The Arbiter. Fearful Symmetry was a Deep Space Nine story, and The Arbiter was a Voyager story. Uh, the Deep Space Nine one centered around Cisco meeting a female Vorta, and that was unusual and different, although it was later pointed out in Trek Corps that there were other, there was one other female border before that in the Chemidar episode. But that was because they forgot, and when they introduced it the, in the ship, which has elements of this story, you know, so <laughs> that was different. They, they changed the, the, the premise around a little bit, as they did on the show. Um, so we have, yeah, they made Kira like a freedom fighter, and they never get to see her actually beat. The living tar out of Kai Wind in the end is like, why wouldn't she? She's a freedom fighter. Get her back over the planet. Too. Anyway, so <laughs> that Trek core has uh, gone offline, but there's still the Trek continues. But we're not going to go on to that. We're going to go right over this because unlike the uh, seemingly ominous, um, <laughs> uh, um, there was a Trek yards seemingly ominous Trek yards thing. That wasn't. He's just. He was just. Made it seem that way because he seems a little down. So, no, he's he's it's not they're not ending that one. Trek Yards is still around. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we have these two stories were, uh, um, yeah, um, Mark's cards, and I decided, hey, well, let's just let's just do them. So I found the 2002 reprints from our files of these stories, which was during the Strange New Worlds writing contest, which was later. Uh, they were in that one, uh, and uh, later on they used the title "Fearful Symmetry" in a pocket book story, but it was after that, so we could use it. Um, so we're using it. So the Starship Strange Worlds uh, location, Strange Worlds episode, we'll be going to both of those stories. We'll be doing both those fan stories that have been rewritten slightly to make them match this ship and crew on their mission. So we have that's exciting. Fearful Symmetry and the Arbiter of Key Draconis is now the title of that one. So we go Fearful Symmetry takes us to the uh, Deep Space Nine in this version of the universe, Deep Space Station 4, but it's Deep Space Nine. <laughs> it's kind of obvious what it is. And then the other one, it's on the Voyager, but it's not the Voyager in the, in the rewrite. It's the Chimera A. So we've changed some things around to avoid issues. You might get good copyright issues. So yes, they have been rewritten. And next... We come to, those are two stuff we wrote, so it's in-house. Oh, yeah, nepotism, in-house. All right, then we come to Incredulous Maximus. That's the uh, Roman Planet episode, the uh, Bread and Circuses. Bread and Circuses are by Gene Roddenberry and Gene Coogan for TOS. Uh, looks like Silly Kelly's doing a bunch of these to, to final story drafts. Uh, that's exciting. So Silly Kelly's pretty much taken over like half of it. That's cool, because he knows how to do episodes just as well as Cowpoke. It, it's us doing, yeah. We're not insane. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we have uh, the, the late January draft uh, visiting the Roman planet, which is also grafted into the TV planet 
but to avoid the confusion of the TV planet from the, from the Silly Trek, they've banned television. So they have to go to the planet to tell them not to ban their televisions. So it's, uh, yeah, so they've, they've, they've gone insane since being visited Phantoma, and uh, they have to, like, put their propaganda back, which is funny, uh, among other things on the Chimera. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, the station story, the earlier one, Arbiter is rewritten as an Emmett Till story, so it's Deep Space Nine Emmett Till, done as Deep Space Nine Season 8 episode. <laughs> so, what do you want to know? Yeah. So, you want to know? This is what our pilot, or our story of Season 8 would have been about. Completely different from there. There. All right. So, the next one is a fun one. It was a Trek Core one as well. Long debate. Some elements of what would end up in this story. Uh, this is behind the eight ball. This episode, we go back to a piece of the action. The episode, TOS episode, the late David Harmon, and uh, on a premise by Quentin Tarantino. Yes, that Quentin Tarantino director. Uh, he wrote a premise for a Star Trek episode, and it is incurred and included in here. This is basically Pulp Fiction meets Star Trek. That's what it is. Um, but but uh, with the swearing. Down, dumbed down to a PG-13. So, yeah. And there's a guy named Swearing Guy, a Swearing Man in it, who's Quentin Tarantino. We didn't talk to Quentin Tarantino. That's ridiculous. No, what it is that we took his premise and we said, like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do a spoof of that idea. So this is a spoof of that idea. And yes, yes, Rumbly is in it. Yay! And the uh, whole cast is in it. Vita Cole is back. And, and the Swearing Man, Vita Cole, of course, meets Swearing Man. That's hilarious. Um... Also, I think the pilot has Jay and Mike, but from the <laughs> Red Letter Media. But uh, but maybe not characters, jokes of the Red Letter Media guys. And this one has Messi, Messi in this period. So cool, uh, so cool. Uh, behind the eight ball. And um, <laughs> uh, then we come to the letter half of the season, uh, February episodes, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, we come to Code of Ethics. I stole the Joe Swan title thing for a two-parter adventure with the Exer students. Instead of doing the trial story or the bullshit story or the other vast TMS martial sporty stories that are already known in Cillian Realms, this is an alternate universe story in which the trial never happened in the silly universe. In the silly, actual silly Trek universe is much more twisted, and it didn't happen. And this is what actually happened. This is a ninety-minute movie in the TMS Marshall Sporius stuff. It's it's trying to avoid being offensive to anybody, but it's it's silly, so don't worry about it. Uh, it will not be offensive. It will not be uh, actionable in any way. It'll, it's fun. It's a fun story. Um, the alternate universes stuff and weird stuff and goofy things going on and, and the March cards ending to approval. And uh, that is MC Kim returning to the fold to do that one because who else would have done it? All right, so next we have, uh, yeah, it's a sort of a, sort of a pseudo two-part finale of the, of the thing here, Calcat. Uh, what's fun about this one was that we found the guy that played the Kirk God in 2006, did his lines in 2006, uh, Brian Story, uh, <laughs> Babylon 5 and the others, now retired, and chatted with him via the, uh, the computer on the phone, on the text messaging, for a good two and a half hours, and he had some ideas, so I said, I'm going to put them in here. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we have we have we have the episode that is uh, two episodes born from that idea. Of course, Mark's cards was also involved in this one heavily uh, because yeah, we were gonna go to Flodi, the planet from his story, the Flodi planet, and show that off. So we do go to his planet. So it's another in-house one. Um, <laughs> they're all pretty much yeah. half of them are half of them are based on something else. Or on uh, some TOS episodes, a third of them based on TOS episodes, and then, oh yeah, and the pilot is based on the Evergreen stories, Cillian stories, Miriam, 
planet, more so than Miri, the Miriam planet stories. You could actually see them canonized, put into canon. And then we come to No Easy Way Out, <laughs> 80s uh, sounding song. Uh, yeah, Cal Cat. Story and premise, uh, yeah, um, that's in February. And in this one, we have a combination of some TMS Xers that go down to a planet, meet up with Halter and Buffkin, Buff them in the parody, Buff and him, and Bluson and a bunch of the Cillians. They finally meet up. We finally have Kling Buff and Buff and him have a, a scene together. So uh, Jim Tikon talks to himself. <coughs> also, we have some other fun stuff. Um, Rihanna shows up again. So the uh, the alien. The, the border lady shows up in this one, too. So. <laughs> but yes, um, and the Elijah shows up in this one, and we get to see some of that backstory of, like, so there was this, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the, the, the planet story, the one about the, the Fallen Ones planet story, the second season, they hinted at a war that happened 800 years earlier, roughly 700, 800 years earlier, and there was a war between the Elijahs, and then that's this. <laughs> that's the war and it's as more it's actually rather pathetic which is funny rather pathetic war that happened um what's the beginning of it <laughs> this whole season is that war so, um, so we have uh, the dominion the dominion is back okay then we get up to the finale which just literally is hot off the press done and it's literal typos which is funny um probably gonna need to do another uh, edit this and do another draft of it because literally, it, yeah, it's some interesting typos. Um, still read it, but uh, cute in our stars, and in the cute in our stars, again, premise of the story, uh, premise also by Shadow Dancer from the, from the, the Bullshito, but an earlier premise, so not in any contact with it currently at all. It's an earlier premise, it's based loosely on the some of the later post bullshito blog stuff. That was left over, so there's a little bit of that. But for this one, we go to Cillian Earth, and we hang around at Pine Hill, which I visited, now that it's changed over to a, a kitty, uh, a ninja, well, it says it's a ninja school, <laughs> but it's not. It's like a, it's like a, like a athletics area is across the street, and then it's part of it. So it's what's going on. They're not ninjas, obviously. So the so the gag is they, they the crew, all the crew from all the season, goes to this school and learns the secret of the teen spirit on the that pine. <laughs> so there we go. Um yeah, so we have we have uh interesting things going on here. And we and we went and I went to the, the visited pseudo Pine Hill uh, a couple of months ago, it was late summer. Yeah, late summer. Um, so that was interesting. Um, yeah, so this whole season is kind of a... We'll go on to the season later. This was just a brief to tell you that there's going to be a new season. Wow. So, all right.